Hello, this is Yuki Kudo speaking from Japan on 22nd of August 2021. I do really hope that this message finds you all well um, in the global pandemic and so many I mean, situations, as you all know, are taking place I mean, in a manner that I mean, nobody actually is really, um, I mean, well, what can I say, is certain as to what exactly is going to happen. and. And I think it is a kind of message I actually feel that, I mean, I'm kind of obliged, even though I'm humbly and also with a kind of small dedication to the entire world, probably. But you never know, a, a drop of the water could mean or could possibly become something like a big ocean tide or, or ocean wave. Um, I would like to talk about, I mean, today, about this um, uh, professor emeritus of Hokkaido University who graduated from the alma mater, the University of Tokyo, I mean, the physics, I mean, professor. And he was actually, I mean, writing uh, many kind of, I mean, not only thesis, but I mean, essays as well of truth. And I was actually reading it um, this summer with huge interest in manner because, I mean, the war history are not really quite often written by the scientist in the manner that, I mean, away from any prejudices, so to, so to speak. And I was reading his I mean, essays and I was really, I mean, interested and surprised to find out that the entire world knew the a kind of, I mean, huge technological development, I should say, of the nuclear I mean, fission. I mean, thesis uh, established by the likes, likes of the Sir Rutherford of the Cavendish Institute in Cambridge, you know, University of Cambridge. And that was actually one year be prior to 1940 or so. So, but no, I mean, scientists expected that um, something like a nuclear bombs or nuclear weapons could develop during the World War II. And it was actually the same for Japan as well. That, um, well, um, as a matter of fact, um, because, I mean, today is a date, actually, I mean, the Nazi um, Germany or Hitler has decided to burn Paris, um, as you might know, I mean, from the famous movie or famous film as well. And it was actually, first of all, developed in Germany, I mean, this technological development or this kind of thought to build nuclear weapons. And that is the reason why that, um, well, UK and US and all those Jewish, I mean, scientists who are, have fled from, I mean, Nazi-occupied Germany or, I mean, Germany itself has really decided that they must do something about it. And also they have to actually do a countermeasure kind of development. And that actually is the reason why I mean, the nuclear weapons have actually been made, I mean, during the World War II. And as a result of it, yes, as you all know, Hiroshima and Nagasaki and Japan have suffered a great deal. Yes, absolutely a great deal. But Japan was seeking for the end of the, I mean, reconciliation of war and World War II in 1942, I mean, asking by the nation state then USSR and uh, Japan's I mean kind of I mean well friendly nation because of the I mean anti um um well Japan really had a I mean neutral treaty with the USSR then. So but Japan's I mean um desire to stop the war was not um accepted and and in the end, I mean, such huge damages took place in 1945. And then why I'm actually, I mean, did Japan actually decided to embark in the war, I mean, such as Pearl Harbor in 1941, I mean, is that, I mean, well, um, it was really a kind of, I mean, unsettling time in the entire world. I mean, USA was actually, I mean, having this plan A, B, C, D, E, I mean, the, or something like red plan and orange plan, or red plan was actually USA versus the United Kingdom, 
or Great Britain. I mean, so there are so many kinds of I mean, perspective situation which might have been actually taken place. I mean, instead of the current situation or the past history of the truth. And Japan was actually not wanting to embark in the war, but because of the time, I mean, the era, I mean, in that timing was a kind of era which really acknowledged the kind of, well, I mean, the racial discriminations as well as um, colonization of the so-called um, non-white, I mean, which has been actually taking place a lot with a kind of, I mean, human rights infringement by the country like UK and France and major countries. I mean, it was really quite taken as a norm, unfortunately, even though today is a very date that, I mean, the first um, kind of, I mean, treaty of the Geneva Convention started, I mean, in the 19th century, or no, 17th century to be exact. And why Japan actually ended up, I mean, embarking in the war is the situation of Manchuria um, was denied, as if to say that, I mean, even though um, the colonization by the major other countries like US, I mean, US and the UK or France are okay, but not Japan, kind of a with a racial discrimination manner to the level that, I mean, Japan did actually have to suffer from the economic sanctions. I mean, no oils. I mean, when Japan had no um, energy sources and six million tons of the oils was really become suddenly has become zero. And so it was a kind of situation if Japan should actually try to fight or flight or, I mean, um, kind of, I mean, be colonized or even worse, I mean, really, I mean, sanction to death or kind of a trial to do something about it, kind of, I mean, difficult situations, which I have actually found out directly from the um, individual, such as, um, I mean, Sir, I mean, uh, Ryuzo Sejima, who was advising, I mean, um, to the I mean, emperor of Japan at the time. So, and, but as a result of it, Japan decided that, I mean, she should actually fight instead of really just wait passively to be colonized with no, I mean, realization of the human right or even the lives, maybe. So that is the situation during the um, era of 1930s and 1940s. And Pearl Harbor was not really a surprise attack because I mean, it was really a kind of, I mean, 50 minutes delay of the bureaucracy situation on the side of Japan. And in the time, time of era, I don't know in 1939 if I mean, Germany had declared the war before the German invasion of Poland, which I don't think so. I may be wrong, but I have to check on this. So, I mean, Pearl Harbor did not actually attack any civilians in the manner that the Hollywood movie actually, I mean, wrongly, I mean, put into, into the, into the real, I mean, cinema or re into a film. So it's quite sad, I mean, when I come to think of it, how the kinds of, I mean, I mean, awful, uh, um, uh, the kind of increased, I mean, vulnerability of the entire world existed to the level that USA was, I mean, possible to fight against the United, current United Kingdom, which is really a kind of surprising, volatile, I mean, period during that time. And regarding the Pearl Harbor, uh, it was not a surprising attack because, I mean, Japanese cipher code called Purple was really read, I mean, or deciphered by the um, uh, intelligence agencies and the likes of these in the United States before the Pearl Harbor. So, I mean, USA knew everything about it. Um, even though Japan did not know anything about the cipher could be, I mean, to be deciphered under that situation. And so it was quite a sad incident because USA had to suffer as well. And the US military, um, um, as a result of it. And, and also I felt, I mean, the four aircraft carrier, 
and in the Pearl Harbor was really hidden, um, unlike a kind of, I mean, uh, imagination on the side of Japan. So I think it is so easy to really fall into, all of us, I have to say, into a kind of cliche or some kind of, I mean, fake news or fake truth or non-truth kind of I mean, situation even now in a global pandemic people are saying i mean i'm actually definitely for i mean vaccination against the sars cov2 i mean covid19 and um, to put it simply but there are so many people who are not agreeing with me and also i mean anti-vaccination i mean believers and also there are people who are actually believing in many i mean um, non true situations. I mean, the world of the fake news, I mean, exacerbated uh, even more so by the social media and etc. And um, in the in the negative and the positive, which actually, which side, I mean, is quite important to, to realize. And, and again, um, when I think of that, I recall this um, phys physician of, I mean, Professor Emeritus of Hokkaido University, and from my alma mater, the University of Tokyo, I mean, Dr. Ukichiro Nakaya, the very first person who have succeeded in creation of the artificial snow crystal, which was 1936. But it was actually, it's not actually a old, I mean, fashion technology or developmental of science. It's applicable to the likes of the climate warming, the global warming, the climate changes, etc. But uh, again, uh, it was quite sad that Japan, I mean, had to really fight in the war because it was, re it was really a devastating damages that the whole country, uh, with I mean, air raids and so forth, had had to suffer. And and while Japan was actually suffering. I mean, USA, together with the Jewish people, I mean, who, who fled from Germany and also from the people from the UK, I mean, the huge amount of, I mean, money, 20 billion dollars and huge amount of, I mean, I mean, persons, I mean, 70,000 individuals were involved in development of the um, nuclear weapons. I mean, because they thought or they knew that, I mean, the pr prior to the 1936, or after 1936 or so, Germany was actually trying to develop them. So it was like a counterattack. And as a result of it, we have actually opened this box of Pandora, so to speak, of this nuclear I mean, technology in a way that is actually used so negatively. So when I actually recall this science, I mean, the kind of in the manner, I mean, in a way, in tune with the nature, the positive side of the science, not the negative side of it. And in the, in the era that, I mean, China and the USA are actually, I mean, arguing, it's your responsibility of this COVID. No, no, it's your responsibility. I mean, the truth is really, I mean, not really well known, but I mean, I would like to say as if that it is like, a, I mean, the snow crystal is, or snows a message from the heaven as I mean, quoted from Ukichiro Nakaya, I would like to say we have to really look at the two scenes in, in the era that the fake news are really abundant in plenty. Thank you very much indeed from Yuki Kudo.